Hello team and welcome to Tuesday the 16th of June's learning. Okay, so back to Peter Rabbit. So read your questions first, then you've only got two sentences to read for your answers. So read your question, then your extract, please. Pause me now. So our questions. Who is talking on this page? What other word might you mean instead of mischief? Is there another word you could use instead of mischief? So let's read the extract. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. So who is talking on this page? It's Mrs. Rabbit, isn't it? She's talking to the children and she's saying, run along. So off you go, you guys. I'm going out. So Mrs. Rabbit's saying that she's going out. Where could she be going? What's she got in her hand? Hmm, maybe we'll find out. And what other word might you mean instead of mischief? Don't go getting into... What other word could we ha have there? So we could say the word trouble could be used instead of mischief. The word problems could be used instead of mischief. Have you got any others? Email them to me if you have. Okay, so read your questions, then go back to the extract to look for your answers. Pause me now. Why did old Mrs. Rabbit take her basket and umbrella? And what shop did she go to? What did she buy from there? So let's have a read. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She brought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Why did old Mrs. Rabbit take her basket and umbrella? Well, why would she need the basket? She needs the basket for Miss Old Mrs. Rabbit took her basket because she needs to put her shopping in there. And our second sentence to answer this question, Old Mrs. Rabbit took her umbrella because she thought maybe it could rain. Maybe there were some dark clouds in the sky. Well, now we don't know that, but there must be something to make her bring her umbrella. What shop did she go to and what did she buy from there? So what kind of shop is it that she's gone to and what did she buy? The shop that Mrs. old Mrs. Rabbit went to was the baker's shop. Can you see where it tells us it's a baker's shop? And what did she buy from there? She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Five currant buns in a baker's shop, round and fat with a cherry on the top. Along came Mrs. Upton with a penny one day. Oh, I'd like a currant bun. Took a currant bun and took it away. Okay, read your questions, then read your extract. Pause me now. What type of choices do Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail make here? And what are they busy doing? Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were very good little bunnies, I, I added the very there, didn't I, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. So what type of choices did Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail make? Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail make good choices. What are they busy doing? Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail are busy gathering blackberries, should be your answer. Using arrays today. I love using arrays wherever I can. So let's have a look at a few ways we can use them to help us with our maths. Firstly, a game of pairs. Rosie and Whitney are playing pairs. Rosie turns over a Ron card. And another Ron card. Well done, Rosie, you've made a pair. It's Whitney's turn. Oh, Dora. And another Dora. Well done, Rosie. Well done, Whitney. They've positioned their pairs' cards in an array. It's a two-by-two two array. Using arrays today. I love using... They want to play pairs again, but they want to make it a little bit more exciting this time. So Whitney says, if we add another pair of cards... Can we still present it in an array? Rosie thinks so. They add in two more cards. And yes, they've got a two by three array. There's two cards in each row and there are three rows. 
Oh, they finished their game. And the cards have got mixed up a little bit. And Whitney says, shall we add another pair in? Shall we add two more cards? Will we still be able to make an array? Rosie says, I think so, let's see. So they move to the side and they add two more cards in. Rosie says, arrays have rows and columns. So they make a rectangular shape. Can we make these eight cards into a rectangular shape with rows and columns? Pause the video here and go and get yourself eight somethings, eight cards or eight anything and see if you can make an array with rows and columns. Good luck. How did you get on? This is what Rosie and Whitney did. Oh, they can make the array. This is a four by two array. Did you make a four by two array? Or did you make a two by four array? Hmm. Okay, this time they want to play again. But Rosie says, let's not add two cards. Let's just add one card. Whitney's not sure. That's going to ruin the game. And we won't be able to make an array. But Rosie says, yes, we will be able to make an array. Pause the video here. Can you make an array with nine cards? Have a go. Did you make an array? This is what Rosie and Whitney did. Wow! A three by three array. Brilliant stuff, Rosie and Whitney. Three plus three plus three. Three in each row and three in each column. So when we're counting how many we've got in total, we can count in threes. Three plus three plus three. What about now? What would we count in here? Two plus two plus two plus two. Or four plus four, because this is a four by two array. Here's one for you to have a go at. What would the multiplication calculation be to work out how many counters are in my array? And what would I add together if I was using the columns or if I were using the rows? Pause the video here and have a go. How did you get on? Did you see it would be 2 plus 2 plus 2 for the columns, and 3 plus 3 for the rows, and 3 multiplied by 2 for the multiplication? What about this one? Pause the video here and have a go. How did you get on with those pairs? Did you see it was 4 plus 4 plus 4? Or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3? And the multiplication would be 3 multiplied by 4. A 3 by 4 array. Drawing arrays now. Eva says you can't draw a 7 by 4 array because 7 is an odd number. Pause the video here. And draw yourself a 7x4 array. Can it be done? How did you do? I've used Lego to lay out my array before I've drawn round it. And here's what I've come up with. 7 in each row and 4 in each column. A 7x4 array. My multiplication would be 7 by 4 is equals to 28, or I could have done 4 by 7 is equal to 28. 
Here's Annie and some cans. How many rays can Annie make with six cans? Pause the video here to have a go. Oh, she's done the first one for you. She's got six in a row there. So six by one. That's a six by one array. Can you find any others? Good luck. Did you go and get some cans? Well done if you did, or anything would have done. Did you find a six by one like Annie? A three by two? A two by three? And finally, a one by six. Four different arrays. What about other numbers? Have you tried seven cans? Or eight cans? Or nine cans? What arrays can you make with those? Here we're asking, what can you see? So I've got ten squares. Amir says, I can see two lots of five. So here's one lot of five and two lots of five. Well done, Amir. I can see that too. Dora says, I can see five lots of two. Hold on, where are they? There's a lot of two, there's two, there's two, there's two, and there's two. Five lots of two. Nice, Dora. Dexter says, I can see ten lots of one. Oh yes, Dexter. Ten different colours. And Whitney says, I can see one lot of ten. Of course, one lot of ten. What can you see here? Pause the video and write down all the different multiplication calculations you can see using this representation. How did you get on? Did you put them in an order? I've tried to put them in an order. Because I'm starting to spot a pattern when I'm recording my arrays. Can you see that pattern? Before we thought this was just a 6x2 array, but actually we can see it's much more than that. Also, if we half one of our numbers and double the other, we can prove that a 6x2 array gives the same total as a 3x4 array. So if we halve our 6 and give it a 3, and we double the 2, which makes 4, so we've got 2 and we need to double that, so we get 4, and we fill in the rest of the array, we're showing that a 6x2 array, if we half one of the numbers and double the other, it creates a 3x4 array. And in both arrays, there are 12 counters. That's really interesting, isn't it? Does that work every time? Why don't you have a try? And now, have a go at the White Rose Mass Worksheet. If Okay, so we're back to the mystery of the missing medal today. And we know that we have a thief among the runners. So let's get our second clue for today. So I want you to pause me now and I want you to read clue card number two, a lucky card clue, please. So pause me now to read this. A good luck card has been found at the scene of the crime. The runner must have dropped it as they were stealing the medal. On the card is a poem. The poem is missing punctuation. Can you write the sentences in the correct place in the table with the correct punctuation added? The sentences form that. Sorry. The sentence form that has been used the most will tell you the thief's eye colour. 
So we've got to figure out which of these sentences are question sentences, which sentences are command sentences, which sentences are statement sentences, and which are exclamation sentences. So in your book, I would like you to create the table that you can see on the right hand side and place the sentences into the right table, okay, into the right place in the table. So read your sentences, think about is it asking a question? Is it telling me to do something? Is it saying there's no choice? Is it a command? Is it stating something that's telling you a fact? Or is it exclaiming something? Is there emphasis there? So have a read of your sentences and put them in the correct place and let's see where the most sentences are. So pause me now to do that. So then underneath, I would like you to say the sentence that has been used the most is a what kind of sentence? which will tell you the medal was stolen by someone with what kind of eyes. Pause me now while you do that, please. So we've got two sentences that are questions. Are all the runners ready? Who will be the star? We've got two sentences that are command sentences. Get on your marks and get set. Go out there and win the race. We have three statement sentences. There's usually more statement sentences. Excitement fills the air. I hope it will be fair. You all are fast and fighting fit. And then we've got one exclamation sentence. What a great runner you are. And so we have three sentences in the blue eyes category. So our thief must have blue eyes. So let's have a look at all the thieves that, no, that is wrong, innocent until proven guilty, Mrs. Upton. We can see the list of all the people here. And we can see who has got blue eyes. So have a little look down. Now, we've already got one clue. We've already got our hair colour clue. So we need to remember our hair colour clue. And we need to think about what our eye colour clue is now. Because they both need to match. So pause now and have a look through. Who do you think it is? We've got two clues so we can start. It's like when we play Cluedo in the classroom with our maths. We can start to see who it could be. So where do we think Peter might go now? This is a map, a Beatrix Potter map. So there's lots of nice little, there's the tale of... Tom Kitten, you can see him right at the top there. So we've got the tail of Tom Kitten. And if you go around to the right hand side, you can see this little stand there for virtual walk. So you can go for a little walk in front of the screen. The tail of little pig Robinson. So you can go for a little sailor ride there. The tail the tailor of Gloucester. It looks like a popcorn machine, doesn't it? And then down from there you can see Beatrix Potter herself. Oh, and then you can see down in, on the left-hand side, you can see all the bunnies. Have they got spades and shovels? The tail of the Flopsy Bunny. And above them, the tail of Jeremy Fisher. You can see the frog in his fishing pond. If we carry on to the left-hand side, you can see the tail of Johnny Town Mouse and Samuel Whiskers, I think that says. It's a bit tricky to read some of them. I can't read the little... Ma the little um, cat with the pink dress on the tail of the pie and the patty pan maybe and then next up the story of miss moppet and then oh there's little there's little miss tiddlywink the tail of miss tiddlywink you could go to her little burrow there and he could go and see peter could go and see miss tiddlywink and then if we carry on round the path the story of the Fierce bad rabbit. Oh no, Peter and the bad rabbit might have um, an altercation. And if you carry on around, the tail of Squirrel Nutkin, you can see all the squirrels in the trees. And the tail of Mrs. Tiddlemouse. Tiddlemouse. And so she, little Tiddlemouse, is in the tree there. And then you can carry on round. And you can see to Peter Rabbit's garden. That might be something. Well, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to do some extra things. So you can see to the left there, there's Peter Rabbit's garden. And the tail of, I 
don't know what that one says. I'm sorry. But you can see if you carry on under underneath there, there's a little burrow. You can see two little rabbits peering into the burrow, can't you? Looking at the table and the chairs inside. And underneath that, that looks like Badger and Fox in Badger's Den. And they've got Jemima Puddle Duck a little bit further on. So there's lots of gorgeous places that Peter Rabbit could visit. What I would like you to do, is there anywhere missing from this map? So we could see Peter Rabbit's garden is down there. And I don't know if any of you know and have seen any of the Peter Rabbit cartoons or films, but there's a certain someone's house and garden that's missing from this. He's a very grumpy certain someone. So can you draw your own version of the map and add anything extra that might need popping into there? Anywhere exciting now it could be your house you could pop your house on there and think i'd like peter rabbit to come and have a visit to my house <clears throat> excuse me sorry so add any extra detail on there that you think you'd like to include in the world of peter rabbit Hi guys, the team in Brayton are doing an incredible job of keeping the community really tight. It's inspirational. They're amazing. So the Brayton Million have put together the idea of a time capsule. And so this is something that I've taken from their Facebook page. I don't know if you want to have a little look more in detail there, but they want stories, they want poems, they want photos of the things that you've been busy doing. Anything that you do, you can bring into school and we can use in school and you can take it to the Times capsule if you do anything electronically, which it sounds like they would like and we would like too. So it's two birds with one stone, isn't it? You can do things for them and things for us. So have a little read and get anything off that you've been busy doing. They want to see it as much as we do. One of the things that they talked about was that you could do a news report about your experience. And so here are a couple of ideas about you could any. Now, it doesn't need to just be on coronavirus. It can be on something that you did in the day at home. So it could be a newspaper on what you did during coronavirus and you could do a whole topic on it. Or it could be something really specific. Have you invented an amazing game that you and your brothers and sisters have played? There are no rules about this. You can create whatever you want to create. It also suggests a diary. So we've been busy writing diaries during this time. You might not, they might be personal. You might not want to use that or you might be happy to share, but you could write a diary piece and you could think back to some of the best times and the trickiest times the in-between times and you could have a little reflect back and write one piece about your time during lockdown this is just taken from the britain millen millennium um, web page so these are all the different things that they're offering so i'm sure you have i'm sure you're more aware of it than me but if you haven't had a look go and check it out they're doing some awesome things this is a little competition for, not a competition, this is a little activity for pen pals. So this is the form that you can fill out on the website. And you've got lots of different options. One of them being that if you want to keep your address private, then that's your choice. And that you can give it to the Brit and Mille, Mille, I keep wanting to call them the Brit and Millennials, the Brit and Million, and they will exchange it for you. So if it's your um, address that you're unsure about then we can look around that so that looked like a really interesting exciting activity you could make a new friend during this and then we would like any of your memories so like the Brit and Million have asked for we would like for the your memories of the good the bad the everything in between of what you've been doing during lockdown so if you can provide us with a photo so when we're coming back into school we can all share these and it'll be something to talk about because we're all going to have had really different experiences so bring a f if you want to email photos that I can forward on into school if you want to do a little write-up there are no rules about this there are no rules about how you can display what it is that you've been busy do doing during lockdown but we'd love to hear and see it please guys so I've put a little here. This time has been a big medley of ups and downs as we 
think about coming back to school, we'd like to create the little book of lockdown. Start to gather some photographs and begin to share ideas for us to discuss further in school. Why have you picked this memory and what happened? And then we've got a connected curriculum curriculum menu for you to have a little challenge and have a little look at. So I know we've had some fabulous maps of Brayton come in. So when you get into the end of that and you've explored some of the Brayton, I still want in millennium, millions, then you can come back to this. So hopefully that should be enough to keep you busy. If you're still looking for more, get in touch and we'll find we'll find some more things for you to be busy with.